Carl and Damon here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Life, GBHML.com for short, and it's They Made What Into A TV Series as we continue our Castlevania talk through. This is Season 2, Episode 2, Old Holmes, directed by Spencer Wan and written by Warren Ellis. We continue the story, beginning with Trevor and Cypher reunited with Alucard as they bicker again. I find it amusing, I find it cute, the voice acting is so strong. I, what I adore, and I will say at this point, and maybe it's because I've seen this show through once before, mm. but I don't really notice them being animated. I believe and feel that Trevor's a real person, mm. that Cypher's a real person, Alucard and all of that. Do you get that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, I do, yeah, I buy definitely. into it. A major part is obviously how well drawn they are and how yes. well animated they are, but also just how strong the voice acting is. I can hear Trevor's voice in my head right mm. now. And so on. I don't know what it is. It's just a really well done show. Yeah, like I said, I've, I've referred to it like many times, like the vampire, vampire HD effect. Of course, you know, but it's much more advanced. Oh well, yeah. I mean, it's... the errors alone. We're yeah. talking. We must be talking at least, at least twenty five years, yeah, if not big, more, big, big between yeah. those. You know, we often refer to Vampire Hunter D because it was a manga, one of the only mangas we ever saw as a kid, mm. and it is such a strong, strong uh, manga. Yeah. Once they meet him, Cipher asks him how to locate Dracula's castle. As she says, she's heard a rumour that it can move from place to place. And Trevor reveals, yeah, that's true. And it's like, I like this because this might almost seem lazy for them to know this. But then you're like, no, no, you've applied, you know the Belmont yeah. history. You have to have that. He will have knowledge of this detail. Well, he tells you, he, he tells you that he, he has all the knowledge passed down to him. Basically, yeah. yeah. And he's looking for a drink. He suggests that he goes home. And I do like that because like, I want to go home. And oh, she starts getting mad at him. He's like, no, no, I want to go back to the Belmont estate. Uh, visit, visit my old family estate. Trevor claims that what lies below it is what matters, even though the estate was destroyed, as Alaka points out, but that there will be a hole, the Belmont hole, that contains information on the castle and tools for monster hunting. Yep. Like, okay, cool. And all three, hey, you know what? We ain't got nothing else to do. We don't really know how else to find Dracula's castle. We should probably head there and see if the hole still exists. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And we see Trevor and Alaka bonding over their unified dislike of each other. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's quite, yeah, say, it, it's very entertaining, you know, just being called childish and they're both keep swearing at each other. Yeah, they are yeah. being children, basically. And as night falls, we see the trio leaving Gresset in the wagon. To Dracula's castle. Everyone is gathered in the throne room. And there's a bit of an argument going on. Hector and Isaac arguing the former seems to want a more ordered war, the latter wanting destruction. And Dracula arrives and angrily demands his general stop the arguing. Everyone goes quiet. When the door opens, though, and things are about to get interesting. Yep, just a bit. You know, without any spoilers, here comes one of the major players of this entire show yeah, going like forward. And in walks the vampire mistress Carm Miller, voiced by Jamie Murray. She introduces herself to Dracula and asks to join the council. And Dracula, in a very weary way, points out, well, you know, I called for you some time ago. You didn't arrive. And she defends, claiming that... And you immediately get that manipulative side. She's like, yes. well, I'm not as important as these other. I'm just a local vampire lord. These are generals and things like It's like yep. that. It's like, okay, okay. She's animated in a way as well. And Jamie Murray does a wonderful voice for her. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely does. She then points out that he lost the Battle of Gresset and offers her advice. That's why she apparently comes along. And, oh, my God. I'd seen this before, but even though I watched it again, I went, oh. Oh, no, she's popping. She asks... An extremely dangerous question. Mm -hmm. Inquiring why he did not turn Lisa into, va into a vampire. Why he had a human bride. And Dracula is like, eyes filling with blood. Oh, and just like, out. he's about to lose his shit. But he holds it together and demands that he speaks to her alone. So he goes back to his chambers and Carmilla meets him there. And I did like the fact that he quickly established... That he knew what a game was. Yep. He points out he kind of knows what she's up to, and that was a little bit to, tr to rile him up, like, um, and that she that kind of, kind of lets her true side come through. It. She's kind of like, well, look, I'm a woman. It's kind of a woman thing. I'm a female amongst this group of general. I'm going to play these games. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play these games on these these ignorant men. That kind yep. of thing. Yep. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. She reports. Uh, she tells says that Gordbrand has been giving her information. And then he does it because he wants to bang her. And they do a little jokey thing yeah, about the I fact like that it. she doesn't want to bang him at yeah. all. Um, back and forth. Which does amuse Dracula. A little a reminder of that human side of Dracula. Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. But he then confronts her naturally about the dead wife quip. He's going kind of like, 
what the fuck was that? In so many words. I wondered. I, I actually wondered at a point if maybe they had a sort of relationship at some point to these two. That's, well, why I, 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 that's what I thought at some point. No, be, no, really, because no, because they established at the start. I don't think they'd ever met mm. when she arrives. Like he did sent for her because he probably sent for all the vampire lords. Yeah. I don't think they'd ever met. Mm. Um, so I don't think that's the case at all. But she does answer it in an interesting way. She says she was giving him the opportunity to explain what all vampires have been thinking. And that's kind of like, yeah, you're not it's, wrong, actually. It is, it is, it is, you yeah. wouldn't have this thing where you're like, oh, Dracula's our lord, but he's got a human bride. That's a bit weird. Mm -hmm. What's that about? And you can imagine in taverns or blood yeah. taverns around the world of vampire drinking parties, they're like, what's the deal with Dracula? Yeah, well, you know it, what I mean? Yeah, is he, he falling in love with a human? It'll be quite concerning for the vampires. Like, do you mean, yeah. it's very believable uh, on that aspect. So well, I'm, yeah, I'm She's trying to convince him to save humanity. She was... Uh, to, to, to That's right, needed. yeah. So they might figure out, is he going to kill us all? Yeah, it, 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 it's, an, it's an interesting, and it's like I said, it's an interesting answer. Enough so that Draka is satisfied and tells her to join the others in the war council. But on her way out, her look tells us that she's a manipulative little... Yeah, mix, yeah she, she's, you got, know? she's got plans. She's got plans, she's got plans. Back to the gang. Resting in the forest, Alucard reveals the details about his murder, the cipher. Some of which does actually surprise Trevor... But he's really rude about it, nonetheless, because he's Trevor. Yep. And he's a Belmont. <laughs> and he just doesn't like vampires. And they reflect on what has driven Dracula mad and the death of Lisa. I think that's a really strong it scene. Is, yep. It's a really good conversation between uh, the three. Particularly as Al Alucard clearly has a bit of sympathy for Dracula. Yep. Whereas Trevor couldn't give a fuck. That's what I like, though, because the fact that it, 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 doesn't matter. it doesn't matter if we're allies for now. You're a vampire. I'm a, Bel I'm a Belmont. He's a Belmont, matter. yeah. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. At some point, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, but okay. Alucard as well has got some good lines here. He yes. points out that look, the world, you know, the world isn't going to die. The world will continue to live on. Live on. You just won't be here to see it. Mm -hmm. Humanity won't be here to see it. Yep. Animals will flourish and all that kind of thing. Yep. At least that's what Alucard thought. Mm -hmm. As then he then reveals, and I guess this is the motivation as to why Alucard turned on Dracula. Yep. As he reveals some of Dracula's long-term plans: the machines and the world of darkness, the death of the world. That is the death of the world. Black clouds yeah. rolling over. See, and the way he describes it, you can almost see it. It's quite haunting. Yeah, definitely. But then they're attacked by night hordes. Um, it's an all right battle here. It's kind of this is this is a path. Yeah. Here's the thing: is I w this isn't that good. But I think there's a reason why. I don't think they wanted to do it, but they needed a reason to create... They needed a Night Horde to survive. To get damaged to. And then follow on for what will happen mm -hmm. next. So that's why I think this exists. Yeah, I mean, there's, only, there's like three or four. And I, 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 I swear, I, I knew like, they, they, they have no chance. There's like Ooh. three or four against this powerful trio. They will give an explanation for that uh, a little later. And I think in the next episode, mm. um, it's just a hunting pie. They went yeah, out yeah. there looking for Trevor yeah. or Alucard. They were hunting probably people throughout the woods and stuff and then came across them and being night creatures like, well, we'll take these instead. Yeah. Just happened to come across the worst people possibly. But as we said, one injured demon is actually able to escape. At the castle, the demon forge master, that is Isaac, reminisces about his past. This might be the best scene slash sequence uh, yeah. of the show to date, mm. I personally think. Because we see he's an intense man as he's flogging himself with a... A studded belt. Yeah. It's extremely graphic. It is extremely gory. It's not nice. And we see him flashing back to having been a slave. As he's getting whipped by his master. Uh, who's a Templar as well. And this is a, a sad scene. Because basically he's being whipped. Because he went and looked for information and books owned by the Templar. Yeah. But he defends himself to his master in tears. Saying that I did it because I, I want to help you. And the master kind of calms down. And he's all like well, explain son. You know that kind of thing. And basically, Isaac says, I did it. I want to help you because I love you. And the guy's like, oh, that's, you're such a sweet boy. And then continues to whip him. I love you too, and that's why I do this. Oh, and it's just like, oh. <laughs> oh. And eventually, Isaac fights back and then kills his abusive master. Yeah, and that, it's that master claim of love, I think. And this is where you realise that's the difference between Isaac and Hector mm. here. Isaac has been warped and twisted by what he saw, what pe by, by perceived by a, a shit version of love. Yep. The, the way he kills him, man, the fingers in the eyes, man. Yeah. yeah. Basically, there's no such thing as love in this world, he says. And it's mm. a moment that would shape him for who he is now. We will continue to delve deeper into their backstories as we go on, but this is just an early step into Isaac's background. Godbrand arrives with a demon that escaped from a hero. So I do like... I like Godbrand's almost respect for Isaac that yeah. he's got to a certain degree. He asks about, like, well, why do you do this and so on? I like that. It was, it, was a, it was a good scene between, like, a human and a vampire. Yeah, like, it's a conversation. He was, was confused. I was like, why, why, are you yeah, why would you do this to yourself? Yeah, yeah. But Isaac daringly, 
offers a realistic yeah. explanation, which is I'm in control yeah. of the whipping. It's like, okay, okay. And with that demon that escaped has now died. And uh, basically, God runs one of the Isaac to potentially get some information out from it. And while he works and he speaks of his motivation for Dracula, he's talking to the creature about its role in this plan, but in the same way talking about his role in the overarching plan. He wants a pure and clean world where there is only loyalty and love. And it was like, there it is. Yeah. Isaac doesn't know the difference between loyalty and love. Yes. He thinks loyalty to Dracula's plan is love. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not the same thing. And it makes him a confused character. That's why I do. But also, I would say the most dangerous one of the lot. I mean, out of both of them, I actually believe that be Hector could be the one to betray Jack Dracula. Yeah, I think that comes across strongly as well, because um, although this will be more developed as episodes go on, I think, more than anything else, here you quickly realise Isaac's a loyal loyalty mm. and how he confuses loyalty and love is dangerous and frightening to a certain degree. He will be with Dracula, Isaac, it feels to me, till the world crumbles around, until the yeah, castle de de crumbles definitely. around them both. Hector, at this stage... You can see what might have twisted him may not be the same with Twisted Isaac. Mm -hmm. We will get more developments because it's hard. We don't want to jump ahead and talk about an episode we haven't covered yet. Yeah. Um, but there's definitely an impression that Isaac's steadfast in his belief mm -hmm. in Dracula and hatred of, of humanity. Yeah. In the main hall, uh, the war council are together and are arguing about an attack on a place because of Argus and if it is worth it. So there seems to be a debate about attacking in specific places. You could argue this is the this is boring yeah. to a degree because there's a lot of arguments about which city to attack. But I also know it's part of a bigger picture, so I'm okay with it. It's got to have a story. You, you've got to have a story somewhere. Every, every season and TV series has to have a story. Of course. You can't have well, we want action, a story. Action, action, we want yeah, a story. Yeah. Uh, Camilla suggests they actually move the siege to a place called Bralia, which is apparently a river port where they can choke uh, the location by taking over that. Dracula points out, look, that's got a lot of rotting warning aspect. It's a bit of a problem, and it is fun that they kind of go back to that classic vampire thing about vampires not being able to cross running water, yep. watering. And there is a fun back and forth where there's an argument really about whether that's true or not, <laughs> and has that ever been tested, mm. and things like that. Because Godwin's like, well, I've had buffs. It's like, that's not running <laughs> well, water, you idiot. idiot. <laughs> it is quite fun. <laughs> but her bickering does get enough for Dracula, and silence falls. Aside from Carmilla, who whispers a coy statement of Hector's ear, so Dracula's like, that's enough. And she just goes, is that enough for you, Hector? Yeah. And it's like, ooh, you little me. I know, I know. Oh. She's, she's, she's manipulating everyone, mm. basically, yeah. Isaac and Hector disagree about where to attack, and Isaac now informs everyone of his findings. And I was like, oh, you manip... I thought this was manipulative as well. Mm -hmm. He waits to drop this information when he looks like he's losing the argument. Yep. And he's like, oh, I found out this. And he basically reveals that he the demon's information is that... His information is that there's a Belmont out and about, they may have found Alucard, and they may it's not like really strong information or no. stuff to go on um, but my god the response of the vampires mm -hmm. it gets an appropriate response the name of Belmont, Belmont yeah. causes a little ripple in fear, the man. ranks causes fear, man. and I like that enough so as well Carmella suggests they keep watching the Belmont estate look there's a Belmont there's a chance he might go back to the Belmont estate so maybe we should keep an eye at, uh, back, out them God Brand being really ignorant is kind of like oh whatever but Carmilla. Camilla gets, I think she does a better job in this section yeah. of putting across the threat of a Belmont to a vampire than anyone else. Pointing yeah. out to the Belmont's a fucking vampire it's, hunters, it's, it's, man. It's the fear, man. They, they, they hunt they, us. It's the, fear, the fear of that name, it shows that they are scared. Yeah, they, these are killers, vampire killers. Um, and then she just insults the entire council <laughs> to Dracula, who's just so weary and sitting there like that. And that's kind of like how we end that episode. Strong stuff again. I mean, it's quite surprised how... Like I, 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 I can understand why the council will be concerned because there's a Belmont about and Drac is like, yeah, and yeah, my, my son's out and he doesn't really care. Yeah, he just doesn't care. I don't. Know, it's, it's almost like he's unimportant, but maybe also a glimmer of hope because um, I guess we'll say it now. You will. I get this strong impression that Dracula wants to die. That yes. this is a suicide mission, mm -hmm. but I just don't know how he's going to get there. It's like he can't do it himself. He wants to be killed. Yeah. And maybe he sees I see as Alucard as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Maybe he does. That is episode two of season two, Old Holmes. Got any thoughts and you know what to do? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw, 
consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our big cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music, and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. Games, horror, and heavy metal. What else is life for?